this lecture, we're going to look at the option of using an online lab provider for our CCNA lab. The advantages we get from using that option are it's going to be ready pretty much immediately. I'll give you a demo here in a minute showing you how to connect and use an online lab. And you'll see that even if I'm doing it for the first time, I can be up and running within a few minutes. So it's very, very fast to use. Another benefit is that it's inexpensive if it's just for a short term use. Online lab rentals are usually billed by the hour. So if you just want to try something quickly for a few hours, then it's going to be the least expensive way of doing it. Now, you do get a few other online lab providers that bill you monthly, but most of them will charge you by the hour. Another benefit, it uses real physical devices. The only two lab options that use physical routers and switches exactly the same as you have in the real world are either building your own physical lab or using an online provider. Now you might want to check this, there might be some of the really cheaper online lab providers that are using virtual labs, but the majority of them will have actual real physical equipment that you're going to connect to remotely. Another benefit is it supports all the different levels of certification. Most of the online lab providers will have different labs available depending on what certification you're studying for. For example, they'll have a CCNA lab, maybe a separate CCNP lab, another CCIE lab, and they'll have different labs depending what track you're studying for. For example, a routing and switching lab and a different lab for security. There's going to be different pricing points for the type of lab you're accessing. The CCNA lab is going to be the least expensive lab. If you go on to study for the CCNP later, you'll be able to use the CCNP lab from the same provider. Okay, so that's all the main benefits we get from using an online lab provider. The disadvantages are the same as all the options other than having your own physical lab is you can't physically touch the equipment. So you're not gonna see what it looks like. You're not gonna see how to connect with a console cable. You're also not gonna get practice of cabling the devices together. That's already done for you in the remote lab. Another thing is that where this is the least expensive option, if you're using it for short term, if you're going to use it for long term, the price is going to add up. So it's the cheapest for short term, but it can become the most expensive if you use it long term. It also requires internet connectivity. All of the other options, well, a physical lab, if you're physically with it, then you don't need internet connectivity. All of the other virtual lab options and simulators can run on your laptop. So as long as you've got your laptop with you, you don't need internet connectivity. If you're using an online lab provider, you're always going to be connected over the internet to that lab. So you need internet connectivity to use it. Also, you have to use routers to simulate end hosts in most of the lab providers' environments. They're not going to have PCs like Windows boxes or Linux boxes included in the lab. Now, this isn't really a big deal. You can use a router and pretend that it is an end host, but it's not actually exactly the same as an end host. If you're building your own physical lab, you can connect end hosts to it exactly like you would do in the office, and it's going to be the one that's most similar to a real world situation. However, for passing the CCNA, online lab provider is still a really good option and it will give you everything you need. So I'll give you a demo now of showing you how to use an online lab provider. The provider I'm using are INE, Internetwork Expert, but there are other options available as well. If you just Google for it, you'll find other providers. They'll all be around about the same price point, but some might be a little bit more expensive or cheaper than others. Actually, Cisco also have their own online labs for the CCNA as well, but they're a bit more expensive than INE are. INE are good, they're reliable, that's why I went with them. So let's have a look at how to use the INE lab. So I've got a link on my slide here. I'll click on that. And when it opens, the link is going to take me to rentals.ine.com. I'm already a member here, so I'll put in my username and password and click on login. 
If you don't already have a login, this page will also take you to the option to log in as well. And you can see I've already bought some tokens and you can see the different labs that are available. So they've got CCIE routing and switching, a more advanced routing and switching lab, a lab which works for both CCNA and CCNP level. That's the one that I'm going to be using. CCIE data center, etc. So you can see the CCNA lab is only three tokens per hour. The data center is 15 tokens per hour. And the price of a token is $1. So it's $3 per hour to use the CCNA lab. So you can come in here. Once you've come in, you've got the option on the left here to purchase tokens. You can use a credit card or you can use PayPal. Once you've bought the tokens from here, you just click on schedule. And then you say what time you want to use the lab at. So it is 2 a.m. on this date here now. It defaults to giving you a, a block of three hours. I only want one hour for now. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to run it to 3 a.m. rather than 2 a.m. Now you don't have to start on exactly this time you'll see that you can start immediately if you want to. So I'm going to schedule it for this hour and search for this available time slot, hopefully. And there it is. And the cost is pro rata because it's already after 2 a.m. They're only going to charge me two tokens rather than three tokens. So I'll click on rent now and yes, schedule it. And OK. And that is me got access to the lab now. So you can see if this was the first time you were doing it, add a few minutes to create a username and password and to pay for the tokens. But still, in less than five minutes, you can actually be up and running on the lab. I then click on control panel here to get the information. And it tells me the address that I need to telnet to and the username and password that I'm going to be using. And it also shows me the lab topology here as well. Okay, so let's actually connect to the lab. So I'm going to open up Putty so I can use my Telnet session. And in Putty, you'll see that I've actually saved this here. So I'll load this and it always uses the same address, racks.ine.com and Telnet. So I will open that. So it was RSP rack 5 and my password and that's me into the lab. It connects onto a terminal server and from here I can connect to any of my different devices. So if I wanted to connect to router R1, I'll choose option number four, then hit enter. And this, it will take a while to connect the very first time because when you first connect to the lab, the routers will boot up. So you can see it booting up here. So I just need to give it a couple of minutes and then I'll get onto the command prompt on this device. If you want to connect to a different device, the easiest way to do it is just open up another duplicate session. So right click up in the top left in Putty and choose duplicate session and then put in your username and password again. And this will connect to the terminal server again. And now I could connect to R2 if I wanted to. So I can choose option five and that's me now on R2. If you want to just have one window open and flip between the devices in there, the key sequence to use is control and shift and six all at the same time, then let off and then X and then hit enter again. And that will bring me back to the main menu again. Okay, that was the benefits and drawbacks of using an online rack rental and also a quick demo of how to use it. See you in the next lecture where we'll take a look at the next option.